Hey, what's up, guys? This is Rich on behalf of OWWR, Old Westbury Web Radio. And today I want to take some time to talk about, um, to talk some DJ talk, specifically DJ equipment. And um, I hope this will be helpful for, for either anyone who's thinking about DJing as a hobby, anybody who's thinking about pursuing it as, as, an, as a profession or as a side hustle, anybody who's currently a DJ and is looking for some tips or, or pointers as far as equipment goes, um, any, any DJ will tell you it's a money pit. That's the first thing. It's a money pit. No matter what you do, there's no way to start this off without spending a good amount of money. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start from the bottom and I'll, I'll sort of work my way up to the higher end stuff. Um, luckily for us, nowadays, there there's so many options. There's a million different brands, a million different pieces of equipment that that are functional, that are practical, and, and that, that, that'll work for, for anybody who wants to do it. If you're a beginner and and you're looking for just one solid piece of equipment to get you started to get to know you know to, to start to get into it to start to get to know it i would it would behoove me it would behoove me to tell you uh go with pioneer go with a small a small pioneer controller Okay, um, I'm one of the persons, I, I started backwards. So basically, what I mean by that is, typically, the older generation of DJs, the way it went was you started on vinyl, and then you moved on to the digital stuff, you moved on to the CDJs, even though we, we no longer see CDJs around as much. They're still around, but they've kind of been replaced by digital media controllers. That's That's the title they give them now. And I started with the CDJs. After a year or two, I, I moved on to the Technics. I moved on to vinyl. And once I moved on to vinyl, I never looked back. It, it just, it stole my art. It's, you know, I love it. I love every bit of it. I love the feel of it. I love the sound of it. I love the versatility of it. If you're gonna, if, you, if you're gonna be playing a lot of hip hop, you might want to look into a, a, a pair of vinyl setup. Um, but just to start off, for starters, let's say, okay, I, I, I don't want to spend too much, Rich, uh, but I want to have something solid that I know will work and that I know I won't have to, you know, shell out even more money a year or two down the road. I would start with Pioneer, with a Pioneer control interface. Why? There are the sim the sim the simple one the basic one that I would start with would be the Pioneer SR2. It's it's a Pioneer controller, simple basic Pioneer setup, and it starts brand new out of the box. It's going to run you seven hundred six ninety nine out of the box plus tax, so closer to eight hundred. But the good thing about that interface is you can pretty much run run it with any laptop that uh that's less than three years old. If you got a laptop that's two years old and it's got at least eight RAMs of gig on it, it's gonna run it perfectly, no glitches, it's gonna run smooth, no no issues. So that that's that's what I that's what I would look at. So how do you pair that up? Okay, you're gonna need live sound. Me, I tend to be very, very brand loyal across the board, and not just for DJ equipment, for a lot of things in life. I'm just one of those persons. When I like a brand, I tend to stick with it. So with, as far as PA systems and speakers to complement this, you know, Pioneer SR2 that's going to start you off, the Pioneer is going to run you 700 bucks, 750, 760 with tax, somewhere around there. I would go with plain and simply two, two 15 inch Geminis or two, Two 15 inch Behringers. Um, I know the station manager is going to kill me when he hears what I'm about to say. I, I, I would go with the Geminis over the Behringers, but that's my, my own personal opinion, my own from my own personal experience. But then again, I, I, I'm the type I tend to blow speakers. I tend to blow speakers if, if a speaker lasts me more than 
two years, giving it regular use, I'm not using it right. Why do I say that? Okay, the, the logarithm with the way the output on an amp functions, you're not getting, to, if, if you put the volume at 50% and you put it at 100%, the 100% is giving you more than double. Even though it's 50 and even though it's 100, you're getting more of a full output. So you're, you're running it harder the closer you are to clipping. So when you're always closing, close to clipping and you're, and you're really punching it, you're getting, A, you're getting the best sound out of it. You're getting the most bang for your buck out of the amp itself. Not, not necessarily the tweeters or the, or the woofer or the cone, but the amp itself, you're getting the most push. So I tend to run, run my speakers hot and that's why I tend to blow speakers. But that's why I would recommend Gemini. Why is that? A, they're cost effective. If you blow a woofer, if you blow a tweeter, it's, it's a, it's, I'm not gonna say it's simple, but replacing a tweeter and replacing a cone woofer on a Gemini is rather simple and you can upgrade. So meaning the factory will give you the speaker as is, and a 15-inch Gemini will run you less than 300. 250, I think they're running for, the basic the basic model. And they kick. They kick. You put them on a stand. Make sure you get the stands because you want them at ear level. That's you know that's where you get the most out of it. And if you do happen to blow a tweeter, if you ha do happen to blow a woofer, the amp that the power of Geminis give you is strong enough to push a stronger tweeter, a stronger, so so you can keep these things if you know how to repair them, if you know how to do a little bit of soldering work, or you can take them down to a repair shop, if you can find one, there's still a couple of left in the city, there's still a couple of left in Brooklyn, and there's still a couple left in Queens, you got, you just got to look for them, that's, that's, that's what I, that's what I would go for the, for a starter set of, absolutely, the Pioneer SR2 at 699, and why the Pioneer, because basically, the pioneer is the industry standard so if you book a gig and let's say you have the luxury of using a house system nine times out of ten the house system it's, it's going to be pioneer equipment so if you if you have a little pioneer setup and the house system is a huge pioneer setup you're going to be able it's the ergon ergonomically it's identical so if once you learn that small one you're going to know the big one same thing with the mixer same, same concept with any mixer once you, that's what I would start with. The Pioneer SR2 at 699, a couple of um, Geminis on stands. Make sure you get the stands. Make sure you get the cases, two covers, because you know you, you might take them out for a gig. It might be drizzling. Make sure you just protect your stuff. However, if you want to go with the Behringer, go go with it too. It's it's not bad either. I just I find that Behringers tend to blow quicker. I I feel like the um, the Geminis, for whatever reason, they just can really take a, a whoop as far as levels and, and how much you crank it and, and for how long you crank it. They're really, they're sturdy. Okay, so let's say you, you're an intermediate DJ. You want to step it up from there. Where would you go then? Same thing. I, I would say you would you might want to look at the Pioneer, um, the Pioneer interface. It's the S, I want to say it's the SC, but don't quote me on that. It might be the SRT. And it starts at twelve ninety nine, and now this one, the S, the SR two at six ninety nine has um, six inch jog wheels for you to be able to scratch and and do back spins and, and that sort of thing. The SRT, I think it's the SRT has eight inch jog wheels, and that comes in at twelve ninety nine. So if you want to kind of give your give yourself a little boost, that's something you might you might want to look at, you know. And you have the advantage with Pioneer, like I said, it's the industry standard. If you're ever working with another DJ, chances are, let's say your setup goal gets shot to, to crap, you can use your buddy's setup and chances are his is going to be a Pioneer. So you're, you're, you're also going to know how to use it pretty fairly simply. Aside from that, there's a, there's a ton of other brands that, that are really worth it looking for looking into Newmark. I'm, I'm familiar with Newmark. I've owned a couple of Newmark mixers here and there. Denon. I started with Denon. Denon is rock, sol rock solid, cost efficient, 
and you, you can't go wrong. However, what's the downside to starting off with denim? Later on, if, if you really pick up and you start booking gigs and you start to use house systems and you start to use maybe you do private parties for a company and you start to use the company's equipment, they're going to have Pioneer. If they don't have Pioneer, they're going to have Rain, right? But however, then in, bang for your buck, you can't go wrong. They're rock solid. They're dependable. Me personally, uh, after I moved on to the vinyl and, and started using Pioneer stuff, I still... Do like to use a small denim setup just in case if you're traveling. Like if you get lucky enough to book a gig overseas or, or that, you, that you get to travel for where you have to put your equipment on a plane. Here's the thing. Things happen. So you don't want to take your priciest piece of equipment on the road because if anything happens, you, you don't want to lose the farm. So you take a piece of denim equipment that you know is rock solid you know it's cost efficient, and God forbid it gets lost in transit or gets damaged in transit, you're not losing your best piece of equipment. And, I, and I'll tell you a story. Years ago when I first started, I had a, I, I had a huge gig, one of the, one of the biggest gigs I, I did in my life. I did uh, Urban Land Mix down in South Beach in Miami. And I was there for five days, and I did a ton of gigs, one of the best times of my life. And when it came time to come back home to New York, I was so just gone, like my mind, you know, I was moving a million miles an hour. I had a lot of things on my mind. There was a lot going on. I left the hotel for the airport and I left my entire setup in hotel storage. And I didn't remember that I forgot my, I had my luggage, my clothes, my sneakers, my backpack. And once the plane was on the air, I, I remembered I left my equipment in storage. Because I didn't want to leave it in the hotel room because in storage, they, they guarantee it. So I left, once I did my gigs, I would just, you know, give it to the hotel storage and they would lock it up in key. And the plan was, you know, once it's time to go home, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take it out of, out, out of the hotel storage and I'll, I'll be at, I forgot it on the way out. But luckily for me, the entire, we were with a big crew, the entire crew that I was with left at different times. So I was able to get on the phone and call one of my buddies that was still in the hotel, hadn't left yet for his flight and luckily for me he only had one piece of carry-on so he was able to take his carry-on and check in my denim setup and bring it to me back to new york and it took a whooping because he had to check it so he had to go through and you know how they treat luggage at the airport they treat it like it's trash but it, it's it also says something about den denim equipment because after that beating it took being left there and then being thrown on the plane just because I brought it in carry-on and I was very you know gentle with it but coming back it didn't come on carry-on they just tossed it on the plane and to Denon's credit when I plugged it in back home that little setup worked 1000% nothing was wrong it was, that's how solid Denon is right so I, I would really recommend like if, if you need something sturdy for for travel you might want to look into something other than Pioneer, probably then, you know, if you want to step it up and you want to go crazy, me personally, with, with, within the next two months, I want, I want to make a big purchase. I, I really want to make a big purchase and just set it in stone. I'm, I'm probably going to spend upwards of $5,000. I'm not doing it now simply because Guitar Center is closed, Sam Ash is closed, I DJ Now is closed, and I always like to be in store and actually test the equipment for myself before I put down the money and buy it just to make sure it feels right. So what what do I take into account? I take into account performance, weight, and cost efficiency. Now, for me at, at this point, I spare no cost. I spare no cost. I don't care what it costs. I want the best of the best. I, performance is number one for me. I don't care how much it weighs. I don't care how much it costs. When I get behind my setup, I want to feel like I'm basically flying a fighter jet. You know, when I kick that fader up, I'm taking flight, and I want the best of the best for my sound, for my sound, and that's and for aesthetics too. It just looks better, and it sounds better, and it, for me, I'm just more comfortable with the big, expensive setup. 
That's just, I mean, may I, and I don't want to sound elitist because that's not, I'm, I'm just as comfortable in a small center. But when it's really go time for me, if I'm really going to do something, I, I just demand the best of the best for me at this point. It wasn't always that way because I, I didn't always have the extra money to spend. But now, you know, I learned the thing or two. I know I learned how to hang on to equipment. So what am I looking at? Well, let's start with the wiring. You typically, if, if, if you're starting out, what you want to do is for your wires, you want to go to Monoprice. Monoprice.com will give you excellent wires, excellent quality for an excellent price. You can't go wrong with that. What would I do differently? If I'm going to buy a big expensive setup, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go pricey and I'm getting Mogami wires. Mogami wires are Japanese. They're top of the line. They're the best in the industry. Okay. So what else would I do? Um, the needles. If I'm going vinyl, what needles am I using? Me personally, I go with the Shure M44 needles. They're proven. They're they're low wear on the records. Even though I I wear records out just on sheer usage, I'm not heavy handed on the record. I I'm very light handed. I'm my hands are light as feathers on the vinyl, so I don't wear my records out on that on that and i i tend to wear my records out a just because of the sheer amount of usage i can go there's been times where i've gone six hours a day seven days a week for months at a time six hours a day seven days a week for months at a time just just practicing you know and it just just the wear and tear just on that and the fact that i don't use the counterweight so I like I, I like my needle to sit heavy, and the Shure M44 needles allow for that. Now, if you want to be fancy and real bougie, you can get some Ortofon. The thing about it, let me go back to the Shores. The thing about the Shores is you can no longer really find them in the state. You can find them. There's a couple of DJ shops like mom and pop shops that have them stock. But to buy them new, new retail, I think you have to um, order them from Europe. Uh, London, uh, Great Britain's your your best shot because they're they anything from Britain is is really good. They have tons of DJ uh, shops that you can buy online. They'll ship them to you. If you want to be bougie, go with the Ortofon Concords. They're sleek, they're chic, they're they sound like a million bucks, and um, they're worth the money if you, if you if you really want to go that route. Now, turn the turntables themselves. You got two options right now if you want to buy them new out of the box. Something more mid-range, you can go with the Technics um, 1200 MK7. The MK7 is is a classic, quality, solid, rock solid uh, Technic turntable, Technics turntable, and they run for a thousand a pop, nine ninety nine. If you really want to just jump out the window, and which is which is what I'm gonna end up doing, knowing me, you want to go with the 1210 grands, the 1210 grands. They run for seventeen hundred. So if you're gonna get both of them, you're you're looking at upwards of thirty six, thirty seven hundred dollars with tax, and that's just for the turntables, not counting not counting your mixer. It's it's pricey, but it's a whole different feeling when you get to that level and, and you f and you feel and you feel the the faders and you feel the way the vinyl feels on the record and how it sounds, it's just the difference is there's nothing that compares to it. And, you know, that's that's just the way I like it. Like I said, I, I like to feel like I'm flying a plane. Mixers. There's a lot of good options. Oh, wait, aside from mixers, let's start with rain. If, if you don't want to go the Technics route, and let's say you want the, the, the vinyl feel, rain has some great stuff out. Rain is also top notch, rock solid. Rain is also an industry standard. So you can get the Rain 72s. The Rain 72s, I think, it's a mixer. It's a, it's a two channel. It's a battle mixer. It runs for about $1,800. $1, and then you can get the Rain 12s, which is a digital platter, right? A digital turntable. They spin, they're motorized, they're from Rain, and they're 12 inch, so they're full size. And they run for about I think they run for nine 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 a thousand flat. So basically, both rains will cost you a thousand each. That's two thousand, and then the eighteen hundred on the rain mixer is you're going to be up at about four thousand four forty two hundred. But it looks uniform because 
everything is rain. It just looks good. It's brand, it's it's the newest thing out. It's the cutting edge, you know. So that's that's also a, a really good option if you want if you're like an intermediate DJ and you want to step it up. Let's say you have a Pioneer rain. You can never go wrong with it. You can never go wrong with it, you know. Um, what else? I talked about the wires. I talked about oh mixers. There's a new company called Mixars. And they have a nice little, I was lucky enough to use it a few months ago. It's basically a cheaper version of the Rain 72, but this thing sounds incredible. It has all the bells and whistles. It sounds incredible. It has all the bells and whistles and it, and it starts at out, out of the box. It's 800 bucks. The 72 is 1800. The, the mix is eight hundred it's a thousand dollar difference and sound wise it's it's perfect man i, I heard it and I, and I was i was blown away now how is it in the long run reliability wise that i can't tell you that that i wouldn't be able to tell you but i'm definitely considering for my setup just going with the 12 10 you know grands and just at, and throwing in that mix mix ours and i tend to be brand loyal i'm very brand loyal to pioneer I'm very brand loyal to JBL as far as, you know, live sounds concerned. And, I, and I'm more loyal when it comes to, to live sound than I am. I'm more flexible with, with the setup itself because I like to try new things. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that Mixars one. Um, as far as live sound, there's, there's, a, there's another incredible Italian company that's making um, PA speakers called Alto. And their stuff is incredible that they're, they're a little on they have they have a cost efficient option and they have a little more pricey option and i heard some of their 15 inches and it's an italian company and it's bluetooth and it's wireless like they're they're on top the, the italian companies are on top of the new technology so if if, if you if you want to get something that's not gemini that's not jbl that's not mackie look into alto it's worth it. They sound they sound amazing. They're they're an Italian company. They're fairly new. They've, they've been around for I think three or four years tops. They're really good. Now, uh, what would the final thing I would say about this? PC versus Mac. PC versus Mac. And this is this this is this is on you. This is personal. Me personal personally, it's it's pick your poison. Do you want the blue screen of death or do you want the pinwheel of death? From my experience. The blue screen of death, after your laptop is more than a year or two old, the blue screen of death is more likely to happen, more likely, right? The PC is more likely to crash after a certain time than the Mac is. However, the PC is more, you're more able to recuperate the PC on the spot. Let's say you're setting up for a gig and it, you just get the blue screen and it just crashes. Middle of setup, you're... 40 minutes away, 30 minutes away from show time, show time. Believe it or not, you can actually get it back. You're more likely to get back that PC. If it's 20 minutes away from show time, three minutes, 30 minutes away from show time, and your MacBook is two or three years old and it gives you that pinwheel of death, it's over. It's over. Good riddance. Just, it's over. There's no fixing it. And, and and also take into account that you're gonna have to have two PCs going, you know, anybody will tell you that. That's that's a basic. So what are your options? Get a brand new MacBook and then get a, a decent PC with um with at least 10, well, not 10, eight or 16 gigs of RAM that's that you're not, you know, spending a ton of money on just for backup. Whichever your main PC is, do not use the internet on it for, for any case. If it's a PC, if it's a Mac, use the internet. Yeah, you're 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 safe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, trying to rack my brain, see if I can, if there's anything else that's relevant that I can tell you guys. No, I think, I think I pretty much covered a, covered a lot there. Uh, hopefully I, once I, um, once I make my purchase, which, which should be sooner than later, I can come back on here and do a, a review and show you guys what I decided to go with and how it's working out for me, how it's sounding and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I, ho I hope this has been uh, insightful. I hope, you know, anybody who's thinking about DJing, anybody who's currently DJing, anybody who's been DJing forever and, and watched it, got something out of it. 
Uh, this is Rich for Old WWR, Old West Barry Radio, and this has been Talking DJ Crap. Peace out, guys.